Hello, welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno. Well, with over 81,000 videos and over 4,500 hours worth of video footage, Kevin McDonald's groundbreaking film finally makes it from the small screen to the big one as we attend the people's premiere of Life in a Day. What inspired you to, to use that story? What was special about that for you? なんかこのその時間の何が特別だったんでしょうか。なんでそれを撮ろうと思ったんでしょうか。難しいな、それ。えっと。うん。そう。あ。He's <笑><笑> Um, he's very happy that people actually thought it was special because it was not really special for him, it was just a normal day for him. So he didn't actually mean to include some message or anything, it was just a normal day for him. Hola. Hola. I believe you're a Chicago fan. Chicago Cubs fan. Yes, yes, very much so. Uh, I mean, it's been uh, <laughs> you gotta be you gotta be dedicated to be a Cubs fan. We haven't won a World Series in 103 years. 103 years. My grandpa died like three or four months ago, and he lived to be 87 and did not see the Cubs win a World Series. But he, to the day he died, was the biggest Cubs fan ever. You know, maybe I'll be that way. I hope we win one before I die. <laughs> You'll keep the flag flying for the Cubs, for your family. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. You must be very excited about being in the UK, about this film. This is my very first time outside of the United States. Uh, it's it's way too, it's, now that I have my passport and everything, I'm like, I could go places, I could do things, but I've never, like, my whole life I didn't really think that, uh, you know, this is so weird. Like, I can't, I can't even put it into words at how, like, I've, I've never been outside my country, I've never been to the UK, I've never been invited to anything like this, I've never, you know, rubbed elbows with, with other, you know, movie stars, I've never been considered, like, People come up to me and they're like, hey, I know who you are. And I'm like, I do not know who you are. And it's really weird. You know? Did you have any concept when you first submitted your video that what could unfold for you? Absolutely not. Like, my, my thought process was like, I just, I was a radio DJ at the time, right? And so I saw the, um, the stuff on YouTube and whatever, and I was, I was telling my listeners, you got to check this out, go do this, be a part of this. And then, like, after I closed the mic, I was like, well, why don't I do that? Like, it would just be cool to document my day for myself. Like, I was thinking, like, maybe one day I'll have kids, and I'll be like, this is what your dad was doing when he was 25, you know? He was a little rowdy, he was going to college, he was doing these things, he was asking women out on dates, and um, and I just thought that would be so cool to have for my, my person, and then not thinking it would be selected at all. And I think maybe in the end that's why it was selected, because I, I was just doing a, basically a video diary of my day on that day. Like, I thought if this, this whole project's going together, like, July 24th, 2010, like, I asked my friends, like, do you know what you did July 24th, 2010? And they're like, no, I'm like, I know exactly what I did July 24th, 2010, the whole day. Well, it, it was our golden wedding on the 24th of July last year. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, we, we were filming our vows, or my sister-in-law filmed our vows, which we renewed our vows. But the vows were there, they were a little bit different. I don't know if you've seen the film. But I haven't yet, no, no. And, uh, <laughs> a bit naughty. Yeah. Really Naughty but nice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, I wanted to put them on YouTube so guests that couldn't come could see it. And then I saw that they were, Ridley Scott wanted the and Kevin wanted these films, so we put them in. They liked them. What's lovely as well that you, what you've done is actually totally organic, isn't it? It, it wasn't preconceived specifically for this event. We only we've only had one golden wedding, and that was it. And the camera it was this. Well, you can see it's, it's not good old flip. Not, <laughs> it's not a very expensive thing, and uh, and that's what did it. And it, and Kevin made it in, into a wonderful film. And what what have you taken away from you with, with this whole process so far? Well, I, I think the film itself. If when you see it, you will be moved. Not by what we do, because I'm amazed that we're amongst these people. But some of these people are absolutely. So cleverly put together yeah. and so moving and, and it covered a whole day and he did it so well. It was wonderful. Good morning, everyone. Can you tell us a little bit more about the, the story that you bring to the film? Uh, actually, the, uh, 
Every single life is unpredictable. Yeah, like uh, uh, love story or poem. Uh, so actually, since childhood, I was uh, uh, definitely uh, explored and adventurous. So uh, when I uh, started this journey, I, I didn't have any uh, detail of my plan, but. Uh, in the Cyprus, uh, 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 in my journey, I have met several film producers uh, in the America, in the Europe, but they didn't confirm about uh, their uh, filming plan. But uh, in Cyprus, I met one of the young film director, and then we could uh, develop our idea together and uh, filming each other. So I love to uh, join any uh, film event in the world. I love life. Oh, so I really love my family. Oh my God! What a brave man you must be. Yeah, a tired man. Yeah. I, I, I. Hello. How are you? Hello. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Raki. I'm sorry. Coming back. Back in the room. Back in the room. Um. Yeah. We, you know, it was a huge task, and um, you know, I didn't have any grey hairs before I started it, and I used to be able to sleep. And all those memories of sort of teenagers whinging in their bedrooms, you know, I've seen a lot of that. But no, it's uh, one of the greatest projects I've ever been involved with. I mean, it's one of those projects that slightly excites you. It excites you, you want to do it, but also it slightly frightens you. And that's always a good sign, I think, it's sort of, you know, to be a little bit in awe of a project, you know, it stops you being complacent. Well, with the filmmaking process, everything normally is based so much on the pre-production, the filming. Yeah. And this one really is so heavily... Well, it, it, it's everything. The edit is everything, isn't yes. it, really? The material was completely random in a way. We couldn't. We had no idea what people would come up with, and what did they? You know, the things they came up with are so. They're just so zany sometimes, and so left field. I mean, who would have thought that somebody would have done an experiment to see how to startle a snail, and send that on that day? It seems a sort of bizarre thing, but anyway, they did, and we used it as our end credit sequence. So. A template that, that Kevin had, had put in the first place so people could work towards that and then make that easier for you in, in the, in the post-production process? Kevin did nothing to make anything easier for me at any stage in the process. No, he sort of just, you know, kept me in a room, a darkened room for like incredible hours. No, it's not true. Um, he, um, he did come up with this very clever idea, I think, which is to ask some questions of people. You know, what do you love and what do you fear and what's in your pockets? And it's a way of provoking a certain discussion about our attitude to towards possessions. We knew that we'd have stuff not only from, you know, Hong Kong or sort of LA and teenagers, but also people from Haiti or from Africa who may not have that much. So that was uh, the reason I think for that question. And also because Kevin's documentary background, you know, he's, he's very much into people saying what things are really like to be alive today, how they feel, not how, you know, television or radio or, or the newsprint tell, tells us how it is, but how we say it is. So, um, yeah, it was very free form, though. We really just had to watch the rushes and let it tell us what to make of it. I love football. Do you both promise to love and treasure each other? Oh, we do. Can you share with us your story? Uh, yes, we, um, on July 24th, I had just come home from the hospital. I had spent four days in hospital. I was diagnosed a month earlier with breast cancer. So I had gone, undergone a double mastectomy. Um, but. And my husband had actually found out about the project while I was in the hospital. It really spoke to him, the project, and he thought it would really be neat. But he asked me, he said, you know, it does fall on the day you come home. And I said, no, let's do it. It's, um, I think it was important film to be a part of and important, you know, really for all of us as a family. Um, it just really, it just shows us what we did that day, going through the ups and downs of, of, of a cancer recovery. diagnosis. And yeah. recovery. Do you think as well it's good as... Um, as an um, inspiration, really, to other ladies that are suffering it, the, the same condition. We went to the premiere um, in, at the Berlin Alley Film Festival, and uh, at the end of the premiere, we were out in the lobby, and there were people coming up to us with tears in their eyes and hugging us, and because um, we all all have been touched by cancer somehow, you know. And we and we didn't really and we didn't think about that you know we, we did it for the moment for the project and we really didn't project to you know what it might mean to somebody but looking back it's amazing how people have been touched by it um, and um, that's meant so much you know we didn't we it, didn't think about that it, make, it makes it, it worth it 
that we did it, you know. Yeah, yeah. It makes you realize just how precious right. we, I mean, we the lot. We didn't do it thinking that way. <laughs> it, yeah, no. it, it just that was a byproduct of it, and so if if, uh, if if some, especially if some woman who has a small child, you know, gets some, you know, hope out of this, then then we're happy. I'm afraid of losing this place. I fear any kind of monster, dogs, growing up. Politics scares me more than anything. I'm thinking from a producer's perspective, it's, you, you get caught in this project, no big film sets, no big special effects, this is a dream film to make and you want to be on board. But really, was it, was it really as, as easy as that? Well, it was a, it was a tricky, uh, tricky process and a tricky film to make technically um, because we had so, so many hours of footage and everything was at different frame rates and that kind of thing. So it was, it was quite a challenge. But, um, but there was an amazing amount of creative freedom on it because it was really just me and Joe Walker and Kevin McDonald and, uh, and no creative involvement from anybody else, which is quite rare in, in the film industry. And also as well, I was thinking from a, a producer's perspective, everything is about marketing these days. So how, do you, how did you market this so that you would get the audience to come in and submit their, their videos. Well, YouTube were amazing, and sort of five days out, there was a little ticker on, on each YouTube page, and then on the day of filming itself, there was a huge banner right across every YouTube page in the world, and, and that uh, generated enormous amount of, uh, of interest around the world, and people uploaded their footage. Stay safe. I think this is the first real internet movie. It's the first movie that is, is in a way, a metaphor for what the internet is like experientially, what it's like to be on the internet, to be on YouTube, to be on Facebook, that you're connected all the time to all these different parts of the world, that you can see what's going on in different parts of the world. So I think, you know, damn social network, this is the real internet movie. Do you think that this film as well um, is, is giving you, because it's so groundbreaking, has stimulated you as a director? It totally has. You know, I'm used to making more conventional kind of feature films or, you know, other kinds of documentaries that are, again, more conventional. But this is a movie where, first of all, everybody who took part in it did it outside of the generosity of their hearts. And I think there's no monetary gain for any of these people. And that shows in the film. There's a, there's a sort of generosity, a sweetness about a lot of, a lot of the material. That's kind of like the, you know, the very best bits of people's home movies. When you see something really lovely in somebody's home movie. That's, if you imagine all those very, very best bits, that's what this movie is entirely made up of. Um, but also because of, because of technology, because of the availability of cheap cameras and the internet and abilities to upload things, you can, for the first time ever in the last few years, reflect what it's like to live on earth on a single in a single moment and that's an extraordinary thing so it's a, it's, a, it's a movie that is so much of the moment so much could only be made now it couldn't have been made 10 years ago could it it really couldn't have been made 10 years ago before everyone had you know great quality get cameras on their phones before you could go into Jessup's as we did and say I got 40 grand how many cameras HD cameras can I get and we got 400 of them you know that's kind of amazing and then we sent those out around the world to the developing countries who you know couldn't couldn't didn't have their own cameras didn't have internet access that kind of thing and did, did, was there any particular framework that that you had for the film I mean were there any sort of stipulations that you, you gave the public before they submitted their videos well all I said to them was that they could film it on anything they liked, but if it was better quality, it had more chance of getting in. And I said to them that I wanted it to be honest. The most important thing is that whatever you film on that day should be about your life um, or about the life that you see around you and something that actually is of importance to you in some way. And then I asked them to answer three questions. What do you love? What do you fear? And what do you have in your pockets? And so out of those three questions, we sort of extracted the themes of the movie. Well, YouTube launched many a career, and maybe after this film, it will launch a few more. I'm Claire Bueno, and you're watching Premier Scene. Best day ever. <laughs>